give your inner critic a break. 10% happier self-care journey. Today is 12:30, 2019. Two more days to 2020, y'all. Give your inner critic a break. Today's lesson was a whole lot of fun from the perspective of feeling like I both learned something new, you know, some things new, some new things, and also revisited some things that I'm already familiar with, already have an application in my equation, and that I just need to remind myself of constantly. Okay, so I'm pasting the notes in the chat so that you all can follow along with each of these notes that I'm going through. Happy Monday to you. Thanks so much for watching. And if it's not Monday, if you when you're watching this video, then happy day to you. Okay, give your inner critic a break. Many times we make our daily stress more stressful by adding in a layer of self-judgment from our inner critic. We make our daily stress more stressful by adding in a layer of self-judgment from our inner critic. Hey Coco, good morning. And this is, I can really sum it up like just with this, right? Okay. Stress is something that is a natural and normal part of life. We deal with it every day. It is an evolutionary trait. It is the very thing that allowed us to survive to this point because just a little bit of healthy stress is what makes you, and I'll give you a, an example of what that is. When you walk into, let's, let's go back in a day, when you walked into class and you found out that there was a pop quiz, um, and really, I could even apply this even if you knew there was going to be a test. But uh, there's a different level of it, of course. If you don't know, there's a pop quiz. And all of a sudden, you're like, what? Really? Okay. And your heart starts beating and you start getting more focus. And there's more blood flowing to your brain. You're more alert. You're paying attention. That kind of stress is healthy. And at some point earlier in our evolution, when we were facing more, you know, regular serious consequences like being eaten by other animals and stuff like that our stress response and the cortisol and the norepinephrine which is a new word i learned the other day yay me <laughs> and um the adrenaline you know and all that good stuff will get going and allow us to survive but in today's world, we don't have that many stressors that are really life and death consequences, but our bodies and our minds, because of evolution, still respond in the same way. That's evolution. Hey, Brother Yusef, good morning, sir. Marcus Johnson, thanks for joining me. In the concrete jungle, there are many things we stress about which are not life or death matters, but that's our program response because we, we needed that response earlier in our history. Okay, so we're gonna have that anyway, and we're trying to find ways to deal with that. When you add the layer of self-judgment from your inner critic on top of that, you're doing yourself, it's, three, it's, two piece, it's a two-piece combo with a third uppercut, it knocks you out because, you know, that's a hard thing to get from under when you have yourself in a negative loop, a negative feedback loop will just continue to perpetuate itself. And that's why you gotta be able to be mindful of it. Now, one of the things I will say, and we're gonna actually talk about this in a few minutes. Um, in fact, let me just go ahead and read this one because it's, it's so relevant. This is the next part of the equation. And this is where we get stuck. There is a big difference. In fact, I need to put the word big there. There's a, I just have, there's a difference. There's a big difference between healthy evaluation of yourself for things that need to be changed, need to be changed, and and negative, debilitating, unhealthy self-judgment loops. I'll just I'll add the loops on there. There's a big difference between healthy evaluation of yourself for things that do justifiably need to change, and 
need to be changed and other things which are negative, debilitating, and unhealthy self-judgment. And it's also a fine line too. I mean, there's a time when you need to kick your own ass and say, all right, get it together, you know, or literally kick yourself in the ass. Like, get it together. Come on. Like, like you can't let this keep getting you down. Like, you, you need that coach at sometimes, you know, but there's a fine line difference between that and between saying, like, over and over and over, like, it's my fault. I shouldn't have never done that. Especially, and I'm speaking... I'm, I'm speaking very specific right now to many of us that deal with this, especially when you have self-judgment, you have the self-judgment loops that are about something that is not your fault. Like you didn't, you weren't the person that created the circumstances that allows you to be that way. Those were the cards you were dealt. That was the circumstance you were born in. That's the situation that your parents put you in or the situation or they didn't put you in a, a particular situation which would have you know allows you to avoid this whatever you have that's a part of your mind or your fears or your character or your habits whatever like constant judgment of self with that in a negative way is not good yes healthy judgment or healthy evaluation when you're like okay this is what happened to me here's why so here's what i can do to work towards it you got to be gentle with yourself, though, because one of the biggest things that's in these notes that I wrote today is that if you don't extend yourself, you know, constant compassion, then you'll never be able to deal with the stress or the hurdles, because the first key to dealing with the stress and the hurdles is a healthy damn attitude. You have to have a healthy attitude for it. And so the negative feedback loops have got to stop. OK, so. Second, second thing I have here is we are human beings capable of succeeding and, in all caps, making mistakes. We don't want to add to the emotions of making a mistake with negative self-talk loops. So that's just another way of saying what I just said, right? We're human beings. I hate the fact, and this is something I need, I'm going to start talking about more this year. I hate this, actually. Like, and I don't hate many things, right? But I hate this within our religious and spiritual paths where we use the concept of like hu being human as somehow being like, you know, a negative thing. Like, you know, like a lot of our theologies would start off talking about us as flawed human beings and human beings that are, um, if left to our own vices and devices even <laughs> of different sorts, like there's no hope for us, right? And so therefore we have to be this completely different thing to be human or to say like, is a real, here's a real, a, weird, a real simple way of putting it. Think about when we say, well, I'm only human. So, and all the time we're talking about the negative side, the, the side of where we make mistakes, the side of where we misjudge things, we miscalculate, we misrepresent things. Like we're in our feelings on our ego. Anytime we use that, well, I'm only human or, you know, human. They even said it in this video. video. I had to like reword it so it could really fit what I believe. They were like, you know, human beings, you know, we we're human. So we're, we're going to make mistakes. And that's so subtle. It's so small. I don't like it, though, because think about it from the other side. Why can't we also when we say we're only human or, you know, we're human. Why can't why don't we ever think about like the amazing things that we are, you know, uh, capable of and that we do every day. We always, when we use that term, you know, well, we're human, so we're going to make mistakes. It's like, fuck. That's why as a secular humanist, why in digging down and digging around our, our psychology, our theologies, our sociologies, our pathologies, you know, all the ologies, um, I started to notice this in a general way within our psychology of this. So sorry to go off on a tangent. That That's probably going to need to be another episode that I do just by itself because that's a very passionate subject I have. So we're human beings capable of succeeding. I put that in there and making mistakes. We don't want to add. The point is we don't want to add to the emotions of making a mistake with negative self-talk loops because it's already a lot to deal with when you admit to yourself that you made a mistake. One example they used in this video was um, they're, the person that they're using as like a, 
a test subject to to learn these effects of stress on you know um she she logged the different ways that she felt she logged uh daily the things that bothered her or stressed her the way she felt and what they noticed in her notes was that she had a lot of judgment around herself and one of the biggest places where she had self-judgment was when she mistakenly did something that hurt someone that she loved you know she had a lot of self-judgment around that and so you know the thing about that is that that's something that is coming from a very caring place so it can seem harmless but it's really not though because at some point you have to accept yourself and you are it's already tough to deal with just like something like hurting someone you love that's already tough to deal with so you don't want to add to the layers of that by adding these negative self-talk feedback loops so how do we deal with the inner critic and this is a little funny tongue-in-cheek but serious like give it a hug <laughs> just just give the inner critic a hug you know and then they said three phrases to use regularly to reprogram. Uh, the funny thing about these, bef well, I'll give them first. May I, one is, may I be free of stress? May I be free of stress? And they were put in like a statement format as opposed to a question, even though it says, may I? May I be free of stress? And you just sit with that. Take it in. Take a deep breath. May I find some ease. And you just sit with that thought. You take a deep breath and you sit with that thought. And the last one was, may I be well. You just sit with that. There were two other phrases which in the meditation, uh, the teacher, Sebene Selassie, she uh, said in these statements, or right before these statements, as prerequisites, she said, this is stress. And then you just, you know, you examine what you're feeling in your body, you know, what you're, what you're experiencing in your mind and where it's resonating or where it's manifesting or how it's manifesting. And you just acknowledge this this is stress and then the second part was uh, stress is a normal part of life so as you can see there that's when you're moving straight into one of my favorite aspects of this self-care and this mindfulness equation which is acceptance you're not trying to make it better you're just accepting that it is and then after that you sit with may I be free of stress you sit with that, you sit with, may I find some ease? You sit with, may I be well? Now, the author of this whole course, this is the 10% Happier um, app that you can download on your phone for anybody who uh, has just started following along and doesn't know what I'm talking about. Uh, the author, Dan Harris, said in the video, he said, he said, I have to be honest, he was talking to 7A, the person who, you know, created these three sayings he said i have to be honest you know these uh kind of these are kind of annoying to me <laughs> you know is <laughs> there these warm and fuzzy like annoying little fluffy phrases right he said but it's okay though because he said i have it as a definite part of my regimen and he says you know the science shows that undoubtedly it helps to re rewire the brain <laughs> she said so how has it been working out he's like it's been working out great <laughs> You know, he said, I make, I've make i made this like a, a definite part of my flow and it's really helped. Just asking, just saying those statements to yourself, you know, and just being with it, you know, allowing yourself the next part, which is the compassion um, and not trying to change things, just honoring your feelings and just being gentle with yourself and breathing, accepting and being in the moment. There's so much power to acceptance. And I will keep saying it on the record, especially as a secular humanist. I think that the biggest problem with our, with many of our religious and spiritual paths is that they put expectation over acceptance. I'm just going to leave it there because I don't want to totally derail. But I will say forever that I believe that 
my religion is acceptance over expectation. And I think it's the healthiest way to live in peace and die in peace. Okay, so here's the next thing. So it's still in the compassion piece. Extend compassion to yourself to help with de-stressing. Be gentle with yourself. Hey, Kelsey. Hey, Delroy. Thanks for watching. Y'all let me know if you can hear me okay as well. I didn't get a soundtrack from anybody. Extend compassion to yourself to help with de-stressing. Examine your stress and stressors without the stories attached to them. This is big for me because I'm very I'm very analytical, even though I'm also, I would say at this point, I have a good level of emotional intelligence and I'm like digging more around that tree every day and growing and learning. But it's like it's like matching up to the already analytical side. Of it. So I'm always analyzing things. I'm always problem solving. I'm always reverse engineering. I'm always thinking out all the different hypotheticals and how things can play out like and it's helpful for creating businesses. It's terrible for dealing with stress. <laughs> I think that's probably going to be a Facebook post <laughs> that I put up. <laughs> you know, being analytical, it's, it's great for putting together businesses. It's terrible as hell for dealing with stress. So examine your stress and stressors without the stories attached to them or the rest of the stuff that I named, the problem solving and all that kind of stuff, the loop. Just the emotion or response you feel, I think I meant to say just examine the emotion or response you feel in the body from them. Yeah. You just want to examine and just acknowledge the emotion you're feeling or how it's showing up and just be with that. This is mindfulness. Like I'm, I'm blown away at like the piece that I didn't know about mindfulness, which was the taking away of self-judgment, which is where I, like almost all of the healing occurs. Always, and this is a final thought, always, oh, actually I have two more thoughts. Always in your meditation time, no matter how short or how long, with appreciating yourself and extending gratitude to yourself for intentionally putting in time and effort toward your self-care. Okay. <clears throat> I would say that since I've been doing this course and they don't do this at the end of every session, but certain people do. And 7A is one that, that does this a lot in the, at the end of her sessions. She doesn't end it without telling you to take a second to just be appreciative to yourself that you put in this time, just this 10 minutes towards your self care. And the gratitude piece is really, really important. Like I'm, even as I'm doing it myself, I realized like, wow, it really does. It helps you. It gives you motivation. It actually um, is a part of what makes you feel better after or during meditation. Um, so always in your meditation time, even if and, I, and I'm saying this for my own brand of like how to do this, like I'm coming up with ways that I think resonate with my flow and and even what I'll be teaching one day, I guess, or offering. Let's just put it that way. I'd rather say offering. <laughs> um, even though I will be teaching. And I'm teaching now and even in just sharing information. But I chose to put always in your meditation time, no matter how short or long. Because to be honest, I realized like if, if for the next 30 seconds, we just take a deep breath. Like if you're dealing with something and you jump in the car and you're pissed, like you're frustrated and you're trying to deal with it and you remember like, okay, deep breaths, like that's deep breaths. Like if you never did anything else, but took deep breaths, if we never did anything else, but took deep breaths, like it's meditation by itself. So you jump in the car, you're stressed out. You take three deep breaths. You're with your thoughts that you still have and you're still pissed. You're still trying to figure out why he or she did that, blah, 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 this and that. Why didn't they do But you're just taking a moment to keep breathing. And every time you get distracted, you focus, you say in and out to yourself. You even use the sound of your breath to duplicate you know, the sound of in and out. Even after doing that for 30 seconds, if you take the time 
to appreciate yourself and extend it gratitude to yourself for intentionally putting in the time and effort towards your self-care. I swear it's almost like that 30 seconds of, of, of deep breaths and the benefit you get from that extends to like the feeling of if you had a, if you had done that for five minutes or ten minutes straight. Like it literally relieves everything. You're with yourself, you're with the emotions, and you're appreciating that you took the time. I'm sorry, I'm getting a bunch of texts and distracting me. Um, so yes, like always end, whether it's three short breaths or whether you meditate for 30 minutes or an hour or 15 minutes, whatever, always in that time, just appreciating yourself and just being grateful to yourself for, for taking a minute to take care of yourself. And then last but not least, this is a quote from the very end of this, uh, course with uh, the teacher 7A. This was a direct quote that I took down from her. I thought it was great. She said, stress is one of the primary reasons people start meditating. Learning to appreciate our own efforts towards happiness helps us to cultivate a friendlier attitude towards our challenges. And that is 7A Selassie. Yeah, I would say in my case, stress was one of the primary reasons that I started this form of self-care. Even though I already had different forms of meditation that I did that were all great and I still have them. This is like another branch now. So it's one of the primary reasons most people start to meditate. And so learning to appreciate your own efforts towards happiness, it will help you to cultivate a friendly attitude, friendlier attitude towards your challenges. So not just yourself and all everything that I mentioned about appreciating yourself and how that helps you. But then when you're presented with other challenges, you just face those even better. Cause like, you just, you just, it's, it's to me, like what I'm learning is it's the benefit of, in, of increased emotional intelligence. Like it's the benefit of continuing every day to, to work at increasing your emotional intelligence. Yeah. It's deep. It's really deep. So, yeah, I, I enjoyed this today. I didn't really get too many people talking back. I don't know if you all could hear me clearly. I don't know if uh, any of this was resonating with you. I believe so. Hopefully my live stream is not screwed up right now because <laughs> sometimes I have static from my mic. So, um, But at any rate, I really enjoyed this today because I think out of all lessons... I think this inner critic that we all have, that's really the crux of the issue if we're if we're really dealing with being hindered by our stress. It's not just the stress, it's the self judgment around the stress that's really hurting us. So yeah, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this. The tune that I was playing in the background is uh my newest piano meditation called Breath of Life. You can check it out on my YouTube channel, Aaron Hill TV, or you can uh, if you have one of the streaming services, you can grab it from uh, Spotify, Apple Music, you know, iTunes, Amazon, all that good stuff. And there's an accompanying guided meditation with this as well, if you check that out. And actually, no, the it's not available on Spotify and Apple Music yet. In fact, it will be soon. Um, there was a little bit of an issue with the upload to my distributor, but it is on my website, AaronHillTV.com. Click the music tab, and if you're watching this a day later or a couple days later, it, it'll probably be there. So it'll be on the, the other streaming services. So that's that. And then last but not least, uh, if you would like to help to support me to make more content like this, check out the information in the description. And as always, I love you and be well. Take time to extend compassion to yourself and thank yourself for the moments that you put in for your self-care. Take care. Peace.